Let's chat about experimentation and fear. Hey gang, Editing Leo here. Um, after I recorded this video and started to watch it back and edit it, I noticed the glare in my glasses as I'm speaking to you. Since I know a lot of you are going to notice that and perhaps even find it quite distracting, I want to say I'm sorry. And it's, again, something that I'll be attempting to address in future videos, but hopefully won't get in the way too much this time. Hi everyone, Leo Notenboom here for AskLeo.com. I think by now, if you've seen the first couple of episodes of this little chat series, you understand that it's an experiment. I'm trying something different to see how it resonates, how it works for me, all that kind of stuff. In fact, this episode is itself an experiment within the experiment. The experiment, that I'm, the thing that I'm testing this episode, is this little guy here. It's a different lapel mic. Um, it served me well for a different environment a couple of weeks ago in one of my volunteer roles. And I want to see now if it's going to do good things for these kinds of talk to the camera and perhaps wander about videos. Everything's an experiment. In fact, if you take a look at my blog home page, you'll see that that's one of the, the captions or quotes that I have off to one side is because that's in a sense part of my philosophy to life. Everything is in one way or another an experiment. We try things out and see what happens. Of course, <laughs> experiments can fail. And that's why in this case, there wasn't a video last week. I sat down here. I recorded a video. Um, this thing that I'm experimenting here, it failed. Or rather, I failed. Uh, the microphone was on upside down with the microphone part actually pressed against my shirt. I'm pretty sure that the cable that connects the microphone to its receiver to the camera, uh, that too may have been unplugged while I did this. So you get the idea. Stuff happens. That's the nature of experimentation. But the nature of experimentation really is kind of sort of, gee, I wonder what happens if I do this. I wonder what happens if I do this kind of video format. I wonder what happens if I use this kind of microphone. I wonder what happens if I make some other random change to the process. I wonder what happens if I click here. And that's why I'm talking to you today about experimentation and fear. One of the more frustrating questions I get, and it's common enough that it does kind of get me frustrated when I see it, is folks asking, if I do this, what will happen? Okay, legitimate question. I mean, I totally get it. You're not sure, you're, you're, you're wondering about something and, and it may do something, it may not. Why aren't you trying? Why aren't you taking the five minutes, 30 seconds, whatever it might be, to actually give whatever it is a try, if it's something that's within that scope, rather than submitting a question, waiting sometimes days for a response from me. The secret behind many of those responses is that I have no clue. I really don't. So what do I do? I give it a try. Whatever it is, you ask me, you know, what happens if I do this? Well, I don't know. I'll do this and I'll see what happens and report back. You didn't have to wait for that. You could have done the experiment yourself and gotten the answer instantly without having to rely on anybody else. Now, I do get it. And that's why the second part of this video title is about fear. I think there's a lot of fear. But in this case, if you're asking if you do this on your computer, the fear is either of the computer itself. You're just generally afraid of the computer, which makes me sad, but it's also one of my reasons for existence because I try very hard to give you more confidence or give you reasons to have more confidence about interacting with your computer. There's a fear of data loss. I totally get that. I mean, if you, um, you know, are asking, gee, what happens if I drag and drop this file into this other random location? 
not realizing that maybe that's a location that would make everything disappear or have a problem or what. I totally get that. It also tells me, though, that if you are afraid of losing data, well, you're not backed up. That is one of my themes, if you will, on Ask Leo. It's one of the things I talk about way too much. But I'm often puzzled because what I see is the test, the experiment that you could run without ever having to even ask the question has no downside. It's a very quick, yo, this is what happens when I do that. Um, or, okay, this is what happens. Now I know how to do that. And now because I know how to do that, I also know how to undo that. Experimentation really is your friend. And one of the reasons that I am, I've made it a topic today is that I really, really want to encourage you to become more comfortable with experimentation. Try things. To mangle a common phrase, fool around and find out. <laughs> See what happens. Because very often what you'll find out is very useful. At most benign. At worst, I should say, benign. But it's often very useful knowledge that then helps you to use your technology, do your tasks, do your whatevers more efficiently or more comfortably in the future. Perhaps a good paradigm to apply to these kinds of situations is to simply ask the question, what's the worst that can happen? Interestingly enough, I've adopted that, that approach for, well, for decades. Years ago, when I was about to take my test for getting my driver's license, 16 years old here in the United States, and of course, there's a lot of, of angst and anxiety around taking the test, passing the test, getting your license. I had the additional burden or, or requirement that assuming I got my license, I would be driving myself to school the very next day. If I didn't get my license, we were going to have to make some other alternatives. But what was interesting about it is that I did absolutely walk into it with the mindset of what's the worst that can happen? Honestly, the worst wasn't really that bad. If I failed, well, yeah, we'd have to make some different arrangements here and I'd have to take the test again there. And you get the idea. What that allowed me to do, though, was relax. And of course, because I was able to relax, I did fine. I passed the test. Parallel parking is still a thing, but you know, whatever. The rest of the test went fine. But the bottom line is that sometimes understanding that the worst that can happen is not as bad as you think gives you permission to play, to experiment, to try things. And yes, while that's probably a fine general life philosophy, my focus here is on your technology. My focus here is on your computer give it a try. Like I said, the thing I would have you take away from this little conversation is simply that. Do it. Experiment. Fool around and find out. Have some fun with it. Just back up first. It really can be that simple. And it's a heck of a lot quicker than waiting for me. So if you do have a question, askleo.com slash ask. If you're interested in my weekly Confident Computing newsletter, askleo.com slash newsletter. And if you are interested in perhaps supporting Ask Leo, askleo.com slash patron has all the details. As always, I look forward to your comments below this video if you're on YouTube or below this video um, on the web page where this video and its transcript will get posted. I'm Leo Noten Bowman. This is AskLeo.com. Thanks for watching.